right, so before we transition into constant speeds, we're, we've just left fixed pitch, we're going to talk about the intermediate world of adjustable propellers, which is not constant speed. Kind of getting there. Got to walk before we can run, right? So we got adjustable props. All right, adjustable prop. And we're going to talk about all different kinds. Hopefully get you familiar with some of them. We don't need to get into all the nuances of how each and every one of them work because some of them are pretty rare and you may never even run into it. If you did, by the time you got there, you'd be like, I don't remember anything Kevin said, so why did that? All right, ground adjustable props. All right, as the name implies, they are designed so that you can adjust them on the ground. Designed so that the mechanic can adjust the blade angles to a given desired performance. Put an asterisk. If you have a ground adjustable prop and you bring it to the mechanic, me, and you say, I want it to perform like an F-16, I cannot do that. So there's obviously limitations. But obviously you have, could you just kind of maybe get control of yourself over here? <laughs> Stop, he's just trying to get blessings out of you guys, don't. After three, man, you've been blessed. <laughs> Even Yahweh would be like, come on, man. So, uh, designed so that a mechanic can adjust the blade angles to give a desired performance. In other words, maybe you want a performance to be more along the lines of a short field takeoff. You need a tissue? I don't have one, sorry. For a short field takeoff, a good climb prop, or maybe, you, like I said, you want a cruise prop, or you want one that goes really fast. So, all right. Um, so, it'll be low blade angle. low blade angle and maybe I should start doing this so low blade angle that is high RPM high RPM for climb or short takeoff or high blade angle which would be low RPM for top cruise speed. Or in between. So where are you going to find these ground adjustable types? So typically, typically used on older aircraft. Although not always. Especially with home builds, you can find just about anything. In certified aircraft, you usually saw them on radial engines. Um, let's see, design. Design. It is a two piece hub design. Two piece hub design. Let me see what I got here for this. Wow, that's, uh, okay, there we go. That's my only photo, I guess. Two-piece hub design. So this hub is in two pieces. You're looking at the front half, and there's a back half. Mm -hmm. They are a matched pair. You can't say, well, I need a front half, because I already got a back half. You, you got the whole thing, or you don't have anything. Um, if you damage one, you throw the whole thing away and get another one. Because it's like they made it and then ran it through a bandsaw, and, you know, depends on which guy ran it through the bandsaw. Mm -hmm. You know, one guy's 
drinks. Another guy does it. One's crooked, one's straight. Uh, Two-piece sub design. You got the clamp rings right here. One clamp ring here. The other clamp ring right there. Um, wood. It could be wood, steel, or aluminum blades. I wrote wood or aluminum, but I know they could be steel. And uh, oh, I know why I said that. Um, what's that? Um, no, I know why I didn't write it on here. So let's go to that. It's kind of interesting how the fasteners on these clamps are oriented differently. Like one's facing one way and the other. Is that to do with the angle of the, the blade? Um, I believe you could rotate these bolts around so that you could match it, but the weight would be a problem if you had a bolt head and a bolt head and a... Oh, okay. So it's just weight distribution? Balance. Balance. Yeah. And if you think about it, on the left side, the bolt's always going to be down. So this is going to come around and down. Yeah. So. Okay. But if you didn't, then it'd be up, down, up, down. Two-piece hub design. Let's see. We have clamp rings. So... No, I don't like this. I don't even buy it. I think it's a mistake. I wrote clamp clamp rings for wood or aluminum blades and then a bolted hub for steel blades, but that's I'm just going to not use that. Cuz that's just complicating things. We don't need to. So it's two piece hub design. I'm fine with that. Um, the blades Oops, before I go on to that, these uh, blades, yeah, the, um, the blades are actually clamped in two ways. So way number one is this bolt right here. Number two is this ring right here. So when you tighten that up, it actually brings the hub together and has some clamping effect out on the blades. Not a lot, but enough. Oops. All right. Blades. Blades are wood, steel, or aluminum. Which pretty much covers everything there is. But it's one of the few places where you actually see steel blades. I'm not aware of steel blades on anything else but this type of propeller. Um, installation. I don't know, not on this one, this particular style of hub. But if we really, you know, we could get into other type of ground adjustables, like I think the Ivo prop, that carbon fiber, it's ground adjustable. Uh, by the way, I need somebody willing to take that off that airplane and actually kind of take a look at it. I want to take it apart. Um, I didn't think of any other wood, or sorry, any other, because this is old stuff here. But anything could be composite nowadays, but not in a certified propeller. It would have to be a different brand of something that I'm not familiar with. Installation, I could go on all three different types. So could fit, uh, may fit, may fit all three types of crankshafts. Off the top of my head, I can only think of the spline. I don't think I've ever seen it on a flanged or a taper because all the ones I've seen like this are usually on radials. Radials have taper, uh, spline shaft. So that's just been my experience. Um, all right, here we go. Reading blade angle. So you may be called upon to set the blade angles on this. And as some of you are experiencing, that's easier said than done. You take a protractor, you zero it out, you put it on the blade, rotate the blade to the right angle, torque it back down, you're done. How, how, how difficult could it possibly be? All right, so to do that, we need, first of all, we use a universal Prop protractor. 
So um, is it a prop protractor? Is it a prop tractor? Propped protractor. I was just asking because in the sorry. book on Saturday I saw it was universal prop tractor. So what they called it in the book. So I wasn't sure if the book was just wrong. I'd say the book is wrong. I figured. <laughs> I, I thought you were just being a smart person. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the book, it's a prop tractor. Is what it says. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. Pro the prop tractor, then. <laughs> Save time the world. Yes, thank you. All right, there it is. It has three sides to it, which is an important point. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Drop this pencil. <laughs> Never noticed that. <laughs> Maybe I've been wrong all these years. But why universal? Yeah, exactly. Well, for any type of prop, I guess. But you can use it, you know, in the bed. Yeah, but uh, wouldn't it be just in the name of prop tractor? I mean, granted, it probably works just as well on uh, Uranus as it does on. <laughs> Uh, does. <laughs> <laughs> My wife today, you got to understand, she's, you know, she's not crass in any way, shape, or form. And she said something like, well, yeah, I totally worked my ass off. And of course, me, I'm like, mm, no. And she goes, yeah, but I can still see my asshole. And she never talks like that. And I go, what? She goes, he's standing right there. And she pointed at me. <laughs> Like, oh, burn! It burns so bad! <laughs> so I gotta throw down some props to her for a good one because she got me on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's three sides here. And what you have to do, let me see, is you have to find the zero reference angle. Now, I've said that before, and hopefully that means something to you. The zero reference angle is the, like this, this crankshaft is at some unknown angle. So obviously it's not level. If it was perfectly level, then we would use any protractor and just figure out what this angle was. Yeah? Yep. Yes. All right. Let me see something here. Yes. If it was like that, it would be so easy, wouldn't it? There we go. And we could use any single protractor in life to do this. Because the zero is based upon the levelness of the earth. So you could do it this way. You could level out the crankshaft or, or take this protractor and use this side right here on the, on the left and place it against this right here, this side right here, and then just perfectly level out so everything's level. But, you know, you would have fun. You'd be back there at the tail wheel or the nose wheel, you know. Okay, raise it up an eighth. Ah, it's too much. How about a sixteenth? No, we need a thirty-second, you know. You're trying to shim and move. Okay, so obviously that's not very effective. And so you're not going to do that. So now you got this prop at some unknown angle. You need to figure out what this is and make this When you lay the, this edge down here, the bottom edge, along this, say hypothetically, the protractor should be, say it's level. Zero. So that would say zero. So you'd have the bubble right here, a little bubble. And this right here would say zero and, and zero. And they'd be lined up right when it's setting on this. Yeah? yeah? OK, so that calibrates it to what you're doing. And then if, if I'm with you guys and I'm looking at it and I see the pro protractor like that, this is the biggest key. You got to keep it the same way. You can't turn it around the other way. And I say that, and you guys go, yeah. And then I go out there and like, Kevin, I don't understand. This blade's like this and this one's straight up and down. What did we do wrong? What did you do wrong? Turn it around. Turn it around. And turn it around. Because if you think about it, we use this edge along here and you're looking at the bubble, but then you can take this edge here 
and put it against here, and you're looking at the bubble. So that means this edge right here doesn't work. Because if I turn it around, it's going to be opposite. The op yeah, the opposite. So like if that was what, 30 degrees? It'd be like 60. 60. <laughs> yeah, so your reference angle is going to be off by 30 degrees. How many of you did I, you know, like, ah, I'll figure it out when I get there. Figure it out now. Yeah, you might want to figure it out now. Okay. So it's important that you do that. Oops. was a mystery? You just were flipping it around. A couple of times. Yeah. So how many times? All right, so we're going to use the universal protractor. Um, it does have three 90-degree angles, so it has three three 90 degree sides. So make sure you're using the same side at all times, be consistent. Um, also, it makes, it makes a huge difference. You'd be surprised. The bubble swings out, so it's got a bubble. Swings out to indicate, indicate when protractor is vertical. That's very important. Um, I don't need to follow all this. So make sure you do that. What else can I say? Obviously. All right, going off notes here. So what do we do? We um, So step one. Step one, say lock rings together. So we're gonna lock the rings together right here. That is this disc to ring lock. So the outer and the inner get locked together at zero. Follow? Okay, so lock rings together. And step two, we're going to uh, find Zero reference. What is the zero? What is an acceptable? What, no. What is the undisputed zero reference angle? Okay, that is the uh, crankshaft. On if it's a spline shaft, it is the top of the splines. Don't use the front circle. It's a small circle. Okay. Nope. Nope, because that's got a rough machine. You got bolts. One could be a little bit higher. One could be a little bit lower. It's just, no, that's really bad. So you're going to find a zero reference angle. Oh. Okay. I asked you earlier. I said I tried checking even the spine of the crankcase, and you said, yes, that's the undisputed. It's crankshaft. I thought you said, said crankshaft. No, I said crankcase. No, not the crankcase. Okay. Definitely that's not. Like, but it's rough. Okay. That's disputable. Right. So it's crank. Shaft. Yes. Okay. Um, then, so in order to use a crankshaft, what do you have to do with the prop? Take it off. You really do have to take it off. Now, if it was a flanged type and you had a flat surface of a prop, I would use that, but I would never trust that nut up front because people hit it with a hammer. All right. Then, to so find repeatable. Find repeatable, I'll put second zero reference. I'm out of room right there, so I gotta do it like that. In other words, you found this, you put it on the spline of the crank shaft, got zero reference. Now, before you put the prop back on, it'd be a really good idea to walk around with that protractor and find something else somewhere that matches what you just did. The reason why is because, let's say you get the all set up on the spline, you got your zero reference angle, you set the prop tractor down, the prop tractor, you put the prop on, you get all set and fixed. Now, mind you, ground adjustables are easy on off, so it's not terrible, but they are heavy. It's time consuming. Get it all put back on, and then you go to grab your protractor, like uh, you bumped it, you didn't lock it, somebody came along, hey, how does this work? You gotta start all over again. So if you can just walk up to something on the engine, go, this is the same as that. 
and then do that, you'll be ahead. So you don't have to take the prop all the way off again. So find zero reference. And then, let me see, step, that should really be step three, but whatever, step three. Um, set blade angles. Of course, there's other steps. You got to torque on torque. Set the blade angles. Um, keep protractor. Keep protractor, how do I don't want to say it, in the same reference, same, same, direction. same direction, okay. Same orientation. Direction or orientation. So if you're looking at the bubble, and when you walk at the bubble, you're looking outside the hanger, you should always be looking outside the hanger at that bubble. So you're gonna do zero reference, blade angle, because you're gonna use the bottom right for set it on the crankshaft put the crankshaft back on or maybe you're going to use this face right here against something on the engine whatever you do if it's facing this way then you check the blade angle on this side and then you walk around the prop and you the prop this way and keep doing the same way and then put it back on the prop this way because it's real easy to turn around and go this way isn't it yes uh, yes very, very even though i've said don't do that i remember it and then i was like doesn't make sense Okay. Um, should we put step four torque and recheck? When you when you loosen all of the the blade clamps, the blades sag. When you tighten them, they bring it back up. Um, somewhere in here, I should put. You need to have the blades perfectly level because don't think you're going to get it accurate if it's like this. Because when it's level, put the protractor on a watch. It's going to move, right? Mm -hmm. As you do that. So the blades have to be perfectly level when you do that. Um, yeah, right in here. <laughs> level prop. Yeah, right in there. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Term and reference. Oh, I already wrote all this. I just crossed it out, so this takes too long. Where are we going to measure the blade angle at? Okay. Measure at 75% station. On the face. Now, a lot of times, not a lot of times, you say this. Sometimes the, the face of the blade is very flat. So you can put the protractor right against it. Sometimes that face is a little concave or not quite flat. If that's the case, you use drill bits and tape them onto the uh, protractor and then the protractor will sit better. If you do that, make sure you use the same size drill bits because if you use a half inch and a three eighths, it doesn't work. There, prop looks like that. So then you can use that. Uh, it's not always the 75% station. I mean, it is unless otherwise stated. No. But usually is. Uh, some other notes in your mark. Mark prop with um, grease pen or chalk. Never pencil. I kind of had a kind of saying that pencil is really bad around airplanes, especially around engines and props. I don't know. They say that if you write, whoever they are, that you write something with a pencil on an exhaust, that the graphite that's in the pen or pencil will embed itself and it will actually crack in the name in the way. I, I don't know. I've never seen that so. I think we should try it one day. Um, try it on what's that? Yeah, go ahead. Right, Tobias was here. <laughs> Put your phone number so I can call you when it happens. Yeah. Um, so pencil's bad. Grease pen, good. 
Sharpie seems to be fine, but you know, don't use Sharpie on stuff because you gotta, like who just ran their engine? You just have stuff written all over it. It looks like, it looks terrible. It's so unprofessional. Uh, but pencils have their place. When you're doing fabric work, it's the only thing you use as a pencil because pen will bleed through all the paints. Sharpie will ruin your paint job. So pencil's the way to go. Um, yeah, I have all these directions here. But anyway, we don't have time for all that. Tolerance, what's the tolerance? That is a fact. Point zero one degrees from blade to blade. And point zero point one degree from target angle. Uh, or manufacturer specs, but that just goes without saying. There is a safety that goes in here. It is a clevis pin. It goes from the inside out. Why from the inside out? Centrifugal force will hold it in. That's the worst clevis pin ever. A little hole in there, so it goes from the inside out. There is a washer that goes here and then a clevis pin. There you go, clevis pin. So the washer goes by the clevis pin. Everybody likes to put the head, then a washer, and then the clevis pin with no washer. So it's clevis pin, washer, cogger pin. Inspection and maintenance. Ah. What would you do for inspection and maintenance? I'm the mechanic examiner. Hey, inspect this propeller. What are you going to do? It looks good. <laughs> cracks. What are you going to look for cracks? Okay, uh, cracks around the blade, around the hub. Yeah. Okay. Dings. Chips of the blades, same as anything. How about paint? Okay. What if it's what if it's a nice polished blade like that? There's only like one. I think it, this could be legally because these old ones there was like it might have been um, the Hamilton standard uh, allowed for um, polished. I'm not sure which one this is. Um, proper installation. What's proper installation? Torque Torque safety. Okay, safety. Safety. Got the cotter pin yep. in there. You got cotter pins back here or self-locking nuts, whatever it calls for. Um, paint, it's painted properly. You've got the high, high visibility stripes. Um, don't forget to put anti-seize on when you put the prop on. But that's, you know, it's, you're not going to look for that. Um, props do have a time between overhaul periods. So that's something you may want to look into. If, I, if you're the inspector and I bring my plane to you and you're like, whoa, Kevin, you're supposed to have this prop overhauled every 10 years or 1,000 hours and you have had it on there 500 hours and 20 years. Part 90, I'm part 91, I don't have to do it. I said, no, I'm... I'm I feel confident. I, you can't. You can't make me. You can't make me. <laughs> so okay, what happens if we're, we're we're doing an inspection? You know, we're a shop, and somebody brings in their prop, and man, it is just eroded. It hasn't been painted in forever. You know, it's it's uh, it looks bad, or even if it looks fantastic, we could say, and it's you know it's been on there for five thousand hours and you know twenty years. 
And we say, oh, you need a prop overhaul. And the owner says, I'm part 91. I don't have to. Sign hey, it off. You don't, sign, you don't have to sign it off. You don't have to sign it off. No. You do not. There's no law that says you have to. Yeah. Go somewhere oh, else. Yep. Have that signed off. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. And you always have that right. Even if an owner says, show me in the book where it says that, you still have that right to say, mm -hmm. I, I don't feel comfortable. It's something in me that just says, you know. Now, that's a whole other issue if you've charged them for a whole bunch of work and then at the end going, you know, your annual is $10,000, but, and by the way, you owe me 10, I still want you to overhaul your prop or I'm not signing it. Well, now you got a problem on your hands. So you gotta, that's a whole other business, business model to, to do. Um, Um, but you should, you know, keep track of this and do that. Um, as you know, there's a lot of, uh, stress on props. Um, vibration. What if we have some vibration? What could be our problem? Uh, Probably not going to have an index problem, especially on a spline shaft because you have a dead spline and a lot. And so they're only going to go on one way. Tracking? So idiot resistance could be out of tracking, which means the blade is. No, they're, they're bent. They're you have a bent blade. Yeah, okay, so tracking could be an issue. It means a bent blade or improperly balanced. Very good. Just needs a balance or one of the groups before you just set one angle at 23 and the other one at 28. <laughs> so that was. <laughs> Now you can tell if it was the right blade or the left blade because if the left blade over here has got more of an angle to it, it's going to keep wanting to turn right, right? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It goes in a circle. So. <laughs> okay, something I did not write in my notes. And as you can see, I'm not really following notes and writing a lot for you right now. See that stripe right there? It's an index mark. Now, it's, if I were to zoom in on it, if it was done correctly, it's not one piece of tape. It's two pieces of tape. And the idea is that if those two pieces of independent tapes are not lined up, then you're not indexed. You're not indexed and your blade has moved. You know what's interesting about this photo is, let me see, are those? Maybe it's an optical illusion. This, because remember, the blades are twisted, but this looks like this is kind of out of alignment than that, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a little, bit. Yeah. It's a little out of alignment. Yeah, it is. It is. All right. So index marks. Index marks are a big thing. Okay. So I, you know that's about all I can really say about ground adjustable props. I mean, there's just there's not a lot more to it. Got the protractor. Um, is it? Okay. Give me like two minutes. I just want to take this opportunity.